Hello everybody, good to see so many here in the Saab Experience. My name is Jonas Jacobsen, as you heard, and it's a great pleasure for me to talk a bit about how to build a fighter. Or actually, how to build the perfect fighter, because that's what we think we do. Fighter aircrafts are all about for, um, air power and projecting air power. And in each and every sortie that I've flown, to do that, it's about using sensors and weapons. So with that in respect, we start off by building our perfect fighter by adding state-of-the-art weapons and the best sensors you can get out there. Projecting power also implies movement. And as a fighter pilot, I enjoy to move fast. So let's put a really good and reliable engine in there as well. Now I have to be able to interact with this system as well. I have to be able to tell the weapons and sensors what I want to do. So I need human machine interface hardware, such as displays and flight control systems. I also need a good avionics suite to control all of this and to generate the information that I want to present on the displays. So let's get today's fastest and most stable avionics computers. So now we've got sensors and weapons. We got our engine, we got a human machine interface, and we got avionics. So now we need to package this to be able to fly our sortie. So let's build a really efficient and low drag airframe. There it is then. This is the perfect fighter. We built the perfect fighter and we're happy about that and we're really, really proud today. But what about tomorrow? How do we stay ahead of the competition tomorrow and in the future? How do we build for the uncertainty of the future? How do we maintain our perfect fighter perfect? To do this, we'll have to find out where the real evolution is happening today. So let's walk through our systems again on an evolutionary perspective. Weapons, they do evolve. The Meteor missile being a really good example of that. Now being operational on Gripen. The Meteor missile is a true game changer and by introducing this make, made the Gripen totally the best fighter around in the world in beyond visual range fighting. But still, the weapons is evolving at a steady pace. It's not a very dramatic change there. What about sensors? Sensors do evolve also, but they're still under the laws of physics. The radar equation still applies, and even if we change sensors and they add new and important uh, abilities to the system, What's really important about sensor evolvement today happens in the signal data computer. So let's make sure that we can swiftly upgrade the software in the signal data computer and also its processors. The thrust, the engine. Here's a graph displaying the thrust to weight ratio of engines. Starting off in the 1940s all the way up to 2000. As you can see, the development is pretty linear. It's not too dramatic. And if we extrapolate this curve, well, we'll see that up until 2030, it will be a 15% increase in thrust to weight. Not too dramatic, it's understandable. Airframe, HMI, also evolve in the same manner, predictable understandable, graspable. So we've gone through all the systems 
the weapons and sensors, the HMI, the engine, and the airframe. So what's left? It's the avionics. And this is where things start to get really, really interesting. Here's a graph displaying the comp evolution of computational power. Looking back in time, over the lifespan of legacy fighters such as the F-15, F-16, and F-18, i.e. since roughly 1980 up to now, we will see that the computational power has increased by 1,000 million times. That's a huge number. It's actually pretty difficult to understand. But it gets really, really interesting if we look in the future the same amount of years. Where an aircraft introduced today still has to be relevant. If you go from now and up to 2050 roughly, computational power will have increased by one million, million, million times. And that really is a big number. One million, million, million times. What will this mean to me as a pilot? What will it mean for my fighter? The answer is no one knows. I don't know, our engineers doesn't know, no one knows. But I can tell you one thing which is absolutely certain and a fact, and that is that I, as a fighter pilot, would definitely prefer to be sitting in the fighter who is one million, million, million times faster than the enemy fighter. Absolutely. So, how to harvest this evolution or revolution in computational power? How do we make sure that our aircraft is always at its best, always flying, carrying the best processors, the best software? We do this by designing a really, really clever avionics architecture. And by doing this, we make it possible to swiftly change tactical functionality and those really important algorithms that I spoke about earlier without affecting any other software in the aircraft. And by making the software hardware independent, we also make it possible to swiftly change the processors in the aircraft, making it possible for us to always carry the fastest processors on board. And this is you, how you build a smart fighter. This is how you build a fighter that will not only follow evolution, it will actually lead the revolution. And this is what we've made. This is what Saab made. And this is how you build a smart fighter for the future. And this is how we say that the smart fighter should be built today and tomorrow. Thank you so much. <laughs>